with the release of the P12 Max and the Cooler Master Mobius OC, that makes quite a few 120 millimeter high RPM or high speed fans that are contenders in the high performance space. So today let's take a quick look at one specific use case for these higher RPMs. Welcome to Machines and More. A few days ago, we took a look at the impressive new Arctic P12 Max, which combines high performance with high max RPM and high value. And it is highly recommended at only about $13 US uh, for the MSRP. Now there's another fan that was launched as well that I wanted to take a look at here and show you guys. This is the Cooler Master Mobius OC and a big thanks to Cooler Master for sending this one by for testing. And even though it might seem like it's just a higher RPM version of Cooler Master's Mobius fan, which was reviewed on this channel recently, is actually a different design. Uh, there's nine blades on this fan, and I'm really eager to see what the improvements are here, because that Mobius was pretty impressive. That fan is not cheap, and this particular OC version is coming in at about $40 US, so it is quite a bit more than the P12 Max, and in fact, it's quite a bit more than the other fans that uh, were, are in this space as well. So also in this space is the Silent Wings 4 Pro, uh, which in theory goes up to 3000 RPM, although on heatsink or radiator, I've never been able to get it to go that fast. It's a high quality fan, also in that $30 plus price range. Technically the Fantex T30 is also in this high speed space since it goes well into that 2000 to 3000 RPM range, but it's a little too thick for our application today. So I wasn't able to test it out for this particular use case, but generally it works quite well. Of course, that extra thickness, you know, it, it, if it doesn't physically fit, then it's not very useful, right? Okay, so normally running your 120 millimeter fan past 2000 RPM, it's gonna result in one, a lot of noise, and two, marginally more performance. So usually I don't recommend running fans in this range. If you can, it's always better to get more fans and run them at a moderate RPM, so such so as getting a bigger radiator uh, if you have the space. But there are times when you are limited to the space that you have and maybe you do need that RPM range for those special moments. So one of the reasons to invest in a higher speed fan is to actually take advantage of those higher speeds. So let's just take a quick look at a use case for those higher speeds. Um, so in the T1 reference, I've got a modest uh, Ryzen 5 5600 set up here uh, that I was testing with the C14S. In this setup, you have only one fan underneath the heatsink, and it is very tight in there in this configuration. I have gotten the T30 to fit under the C14S in the past, but it really is not pretty. And those heatsink clips do get stretched well beyond their capability. In the T1 reference, it's uh, close to impossible uh, with all the cabling. So one 25 to 27 millimeter, 120 millimeter fan can fit under there a lot more reasonably. And hey, at the same time, maybe you wanna do a little overclocking. Even though silicon has been pretty tight these days, sometimes these more attractively priced non-X Ryzen CPUs can still yield some decent gains if you push them a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there's better ones out there, but this one is not too shabby. I'm able to run this one at 4.7 gigahertz on all cores at 1.325 volts, and this amounts to a little over 105 watts PBT, which is uh, about a little bit less than where my 5800X runs at 1.25 volts. Uh, so it is quite a bit of extra power given to the 5600. Now it doesn't make too much sense to overclock this way if it's just gaming, since with PBO2 and Curve Optimizer, it can almost boost up to that high on a single core, but for a multi-core process, PBO won't run that high on all cores, so this manual tune is gonna be a lot more powerful in that scenario. If you're running it this way, it helps to give a little bit more fan speed just to mitigate the possibility of overheating. The C14S, it's totally adequate, for OCing a typically lower powered CPU this way, but you will need fan speeds in the higher ranges and depending on your uh, operating or your ambient environment, you might need a little more. So quick disclaimer, I'm not paid for these reviews or testing. Everything is a product of my independent testing here. And uh, for the testing, I just used each fan in a side intake or top down airflow configuration in conjunction with an exhausting side panel T30. Uh, just like the recommended configuration in our T1 reference configuration testing video. First, at a noise normalized level close to the 2000 RPM mark, and then secondly, at a at the max RPM. And I'm also noting the noise level down as well for comparison. 
For the noise normalized testing, I used the Noctua NFA 12 by 25 as the baseline. It's a very good fan on a radiator, but interestingly here, it's well behind the P12 Max and the Mobius OC, it's performing quite well. And uh, one thing I'll note is that even though these fans are all measuring in at around the same total system noise level in terms of its uh, the, the sound pressure, uh, the fan that sounds the most inoffensive to my ears is still the NFA 12 by 25 which this is as loud and as fast as it can go, but it still doesn't have that uh, high frequency noise, which can be pretty annoying at this level. When we crank these fans up to 11, the noise increases quite a bit as you'd expect, and performance only improves marginally, with the exception of the Silent Wings 4 Pro, which actually sees quite a big boost here for the extra RPM. Um, at least with the ones I tested on this heatsink, they are all spinning slower than what they're spec to max out at. Now, there's usually some variance built into that measurement, but it is worth noting that down. The Mobius OC here is looking really good. It does match the P12 Max, but at a lower noise level, and this fan is really impressive. So I knew this fan was good on a rad from when I tested it before, but it surprised me on the heatsink. It's got an interesting design as well. The RPM mode switch it's on the cable, right? It's totally makes sense because uh, a lot of fans like the T30 and Silent Wings 4 Pro, they'll put the switch on the, on the back here on the exhaust side. And there's a possibility the fan's gonna be mounted in such a way that makes that switch inaccessible. This avoids that. So this guy is a premium offering, you know, $40 for a single PC fan is not a trivial amount. Even though this one comes in very nicely packaged, uh, high-end fashion. Um, but yeah, probably the best performing fan from Cooler Master that I've seen. Very, very, very good. If you just need the lower RPM range, then you can also save about 10 bucks uh, for the non-OC version. The P12 Max continues to impress, and in this particular use case and RPM range, it's smoking the NFA 12 by 25, and that's just how good this fan is. It's just a fraction of a degree behind the Mobius OC in noise normalized testing, and it's a fraction of the cost of any of these other fans here. And if you're looking for a no-nonsense fan to deploy in this scenario, you know, if you just need a quality fan upright for your air cooler, like you might need if you want to run the C14S this way, but I think this is that super sensible recommendation here, and this has continued to impress me. So I hope you found this testing helpful. I always like doing little tests like these, and if you enjoyed it, please give a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Links are down below. Thanks for watching.